The Rebel Capitalist Show. When you text me about the interview, you had some uh, data that you thought would be very relevant and interesting for my audience. So let's go through that. Sure. The Bank for International Settlements, the central bankers, central bank, what they do is they put out a series of data sets that serve as early warning indicators for a banking crisis, not just a regular banking crisis, but they specifically call it a systemic banking crisis, as in there's a crisis in the banking system that will spill over the sandbags that we've arranged trying to keep this contained in the financial system. It will spill over and wash out through the rest of the economy. So that's what they're talking about. They're talking about, you know, national economies, recessions, big trouble. I would describe these early warning indicators as getting over your ski tips kind of indicators. So they're saying it's okay if you're extending credit in your system, in your country. That's fine, even if it seems like a lot relative to other countries. What they're warning about, what we saw with Lehman Brothers in 2008, is that you got way ahead of yourself relative to your trend. So they offer these five different measures, and I think each one of them is relative to your national trend. So if you're crazy, but you've gotten used to crazy, and it hasn't that happened in so many different ways in the last 14 years, we've gotten used to things that we would look back on. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, we would say, that's insane, but we've gotten used to it. It's just gotten too far ahead. And because, you know, it just can't last forever. They're saying there's a good chance. In fact, they put a number on it. They put a, they say there's a 50% chance within three years that you'll have a banking crisis if you trip these thresholds. Wow. Across these five indicators. So do you have the thresholds? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I can go five over of each right. of them. There's yeah, five of them. Let's do it. Just to set the context, the regular run-of-the-mill country in any random year since the Second World War, the chance of a financial crisis is 7%, right? You just bad luck, you have a financial crisis. But the BIS says, you trip any one of these five, you got a 50% chance. So your chances go up tremendously. Okay. Oh, and here's, here's the punchline, George. There's 15 countries that have tripped at least two or more of these early warning indicators mm -hmm. since December 2018. And I picked that quarter because, you know, we want that three-year window. So by the end of this year and the first quarter thereafter, that's how the BIS says, as soon as the three years is up, the zero quarter is the 13th quarter. That's when you would have a you know, 50, 50 chance of so every uh, quarter that crisis. goes on that we don't get that crisis would, is it safe to assume the probabilities of the crisis increase? Not necessarily, okay. not necessarily. Um, it depends on the measure. Right. Some of the measures actually lose predictability right when you approach the crisis. Um, it, it doesn't, and then some measures keep rising into and past the crisis, like cross-border claims, if I remember, international investment into a country continues even after the crisis has started. Okay, I'll, great. So let's, let's let, yeah, let's go over the five for the listeners and viewers. And then eventually we'll come up with a list of a dirty dozen. Actually, it's a filthy 15 of countries <laughs> that have tripped two of these. And there's one country at the top of the list that has tripped four out of five. So okay. we'll, we'll, let's just go over the uh, the five. Let's see here. The first one is the credit to GDP gap. And what does that mean? That's a bunch of fancy words. And basically means if you have credit relative to your GDP and it accelerates well beyond your national trend and it goes beyond the threshold, then that's a, that's a signal of a early warning indicator, then you've got three-year countdown and a 50-50% chance. So would this be the credit that the bank is extending? So the assets on their balance sheet or the liabilities in the form of debt they have uh, that they owe other people? This is on the whole national system. Great question. I didn't mention this. This represents not the banks. It's not the banks. Oh, okay. It's okay. the private system 
So it's all of the households and all of the non-financial corporations. Okay, so all of the businesses. Exactly. Got it. You add everything up and you calculate how much you know credit debt are they into okay. relative to GDP. You compare it to the long run trend and you say, if you're if you're over your threshold, then uh, then you've got a chance. Okay, got it. Number one on the on this. So here are the countries that triggered this: Hong Kong, Japan, yeah. Canada, South Korea, Norway, Sweden, France, China, Switzerland, Chile. Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand. Was Australia on there? It was not. That surprises me with their housing market. Very interesting. Great point. And it goes back to they're used to their crazy. They're not above their crazy trend. Ah, okay. Okay. Everything keeps going up. It's been going up for a generation. Therefore, it'll continue to keep going up. Okay. Like in China. You know, and how they they tripped the credit gap for the private sector, but they did not trip the residential property uh, warning indicator. Canada didn't. Australia didn't. China didn't. Can you believe it on residential property? Because it's a measurement of how fast it's accelerating, not necessarily the the the, the nominal difference or the delta. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay, got it. So then, what's number two? All right. Credit the next one, gap. total debt service ratio. So again, we're talking about the private economy, households, non-financial corporations, how much interest, how much debt amortization, you know, principal they're repaying relative to the income that you're making. Got it. Got it. And again, if you go a little bit too far, you've got the countdown going. Let's see. But is what this something that's here? measured by an acceleration or or just a nominal delta? You see what I'm saying? Is it like number no, one no. or is it? I would assume it's like number one if they're using that measurement. Yes, it's compared to the 20 year rolling average. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if you are, I don't know how many percentage points all over that ratio the, between the two ratios, then you trigger it. Let's see who have we got here again. Canada, the Czech Republic, South Korea, Norway, Sweden, Hong Kong, France, China, Russia, Switzerland. Mm. So we've heard a couple of countries being mentioned twice already. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with real estate as well. They have a separate measure that's coming up. That's coming up for real estate. But maybe, maybe. Then they've got one where you just focus on households. So this is our third measure. Right now we did households and businesses. Mm. This one is just households. Okay. You don't have very many countries here, no. But you've only got four that have tripped the early warning indicator since December, 2018. Canada, South Korea, Norway, and Sweden, where the households relative to income are really experiencing a lot of interest payments relative to what they can, what they've gotten used to being able to afford. Right. Right. Let's go to cross border claims before we go to residential property. Okay. So cross border claims is the fancy way of saying foreign investment, hot flows, capital flows coming into your country. I think we're used to the idea of foreign denominated debt, right? So you've got to repay dollars. You're in an emerging market. You're too far in on on your dollar debt. They looked at that and they said it was not as predictive as the whole picture. So it can include local denominated debt that's being sourced to you from abroad. The key is how much money is coming in from abroad into the whole system, into the banks and households, if there are any, but I doubt it. And then uh what else corporations okay and that then filters out through the rest of the economy and it, if there's too much relative to gdp the concern is what you're going to have is you're going to have a bubble that is you know it first finds all the productive investments that you can just like in the you know asian financial crisis right you find all the foreign direct investment all the productive stuff 
And then eventually you run out of uh, productive investments. So you start making things that may not make sense, like that uh, the tower in Malaysia. You remember the Kuala Lumpur, the tallest building at the time? Maybe that wasn't the right thing. I think the same thing happened with Dubai too, that kind of marked the top in the real estate market. So basically they just go further and further out the risk curve until exactly. the bubble pops. Until you're investing in things that don't make any sense. Right. And especially relative to your GDP, right? If they've got so much money coming in, but your gigantic country, China, maybe, maybe, you know, it's not going to trip anything. But if you're a smaller country or if there's a gigantic amount of money coming in, you know, you got to measure it relative to GDP. And then what they do is they say, okay, we're at this level. Where were we three years ago? And if you see, uh, I think it was 35% increase relative to where you were three years ago, you trip your early warning indicator. Got it. We've got one left, George, one left. This one's right in your wheelhouse. Residential property prices residential property prices. And this one is systemic because it encompasses the economy, right? It's, it's pervasive. If there's a bubble in real estate, you would think it's affecting everything. Whereas like uh, the late 90s, right? We had a technology bubble in the United States, but it, it didn't affect the whole country. We recently had the Bitcoin bubble that didn't affect the whole country. Residential is like the railroad bubbles of the 19th century, right? It's all encompassing, systemic. And if there's a bubble here, the BIS says that this, this indicator is special. It's more equal on this animal farm than the other indicators. And they say, if you've got a, yeah, if you've got a problem in residential property, it's likely systemic and it's affecting these other things and what they said is it lowers the threshold for those four other indicators so if you've got this you don't have to reach the high indicator on a standalone cross-border claims or debt service ratio so this is this is the one that's key and this is residential prices to incomes residential prices real prices real prices. So they're inflation adjusted. And the key is not to income, but to your long run history. So again, Canada, nuts. China, nuts. Australia, nuts. Guess what? None of them tripped the early warning indicator. Because they've it's been normal. nuts forever. Yes, normal. Okay, these are countries that have tripped at least two of those five early warning indicators. New Zealand, Germany. So is New Brazil. Zealand 15? No. Or, or is it they've in, only tripped two? Is it in order I'm, of uh of how bad they are? Or like I'm going in reverse order. Reverse. Okay. So, so from we, worst number one is the worst country. Yes. Okay, got it. Yes. All right. So these guys are all tied for third because they've only tripped two. Well, that's some of them are tripping them every quarter, whereas like New Zealand's only tripped two recent quarters. All right, so New Zealand, Germany, wow, Germany has tripped cross-border claims and the credit gap. So too much debt and too much foreign money is coming in to Germany. Brazil, Slovak Republic, Chile, Switzerland. Switzerland and Hong Kong are both on here. Maybe it's not fair to include them because the, money, the debt that's in that country is not being serviced by that country, right? They're a... They're a advanced economy money center. So they're holding debts from around the world. Right. All right. But, but Russia, China, France, and Hong Kong, they've all tripped two. Now we're going to step up a level. These countries have tripped three of the five indicators, Sweden, North Korea, South Korea, and the Czech Republic. I think we've heard Heard from South Korea about uh, three weeks ago when they raised rates. They said, we're doing it to prevent financial crisis. So they know that things are a little bit dicey over there. Right. And now, the big reveal, the moment that everyone's been waiting for, the country that has tripped four of the five indicators is everyone's favorite country, Canada. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. The only one they didn't trip is the residential property price. 
which is it's crazy but they're really used they to tripped it i mean let's be honest <laughs> for anyone who's looking you know what you the, mean yes. a bit of common sense to say yeah they tripped that one a long 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 time ago so they're they're now they're not out of the woods yet that's for sure